Wallace can't believe it, playing forward. So Headley gets his revenge. And Philo Wallace goes. And now it's time for the England fans to celebrate. Well, Philo Wallace is defi definitely trying his best to get forward there. It hasn't hit him very high. And Sir Mitchell has decided that he hasn't come far enough forward. Much to Philo Wallace's dismay. Ian Bishop came in as night watchman and two more runs were added to leave West Indies 319 behind with nine wickets still in hand. Into a cartoon world and seduced by a blonde temptress, but will he commit the ultimate taboo? Sex between doodles and humans. Kim Basinger, Gabriel Byrne and Brad Pitt star in Cool World in Half an Air. Right, let's see if the bowlers can continue the good work now. BBC Two has highlights from the fifth test introduced by Jonathan Agnew. Sport of cricket is a passion here in Barbados, so much so they've just erected the largest cricket bat in the world. It stands 20 feet high and acknowledges the achievements of some of the great Barbadian cricketers, the majority of whom were batsmen. Men such as Sir Frank Worrell, the first ever black captain of West Indies, who along with Sir Everton Weeks and Sir Clyde Walcott formed one of the great middle orders. The bat is ruling the fifth test here too, and yesterday England's Mark Rampercash scored his maiden test century and then went on to score the highest score by an Englishman in Barbados as England compiled a total of 403. Today it's the turn of the West Indian batsmen to take their chance, and who knows, maybe Lara, Hooper, Chanderpaul or the Barbadian Roland Holder will produce a performance to rank alongside those of their illustrious predecessors. Hello and welcome back to Barbados for highlights of the third day of the fifth test between England and West Indies. But first of all, we're going to have a local history lesson. This is a bearded fig. And it was a tree such as this that gave the island its name. In 1536, a Portuguese explorer called Pedro Acampus popped in here on his way to Brazil. He saw one of these and immediately named the island Las Barbados, which means the bearded ones. Well, since then, of course, the island has had very strong connections with Britain, with cricket now probably forming the last surviving link. Well, down at the Kensington Oval, the batsmen have been enjoying themselves. After England's 403, West Indies have come charging back into the game and resumed today 319 runs behind. So a terrific day for the batsmen yesterday. Let's go down to the ground now and join our own bearded one, Michael Holding, to see what he makes of today's conditions. Thanks, Jonathan. Yesterday we spoke about the grass coming through the surface on this pitch and we thought it would have given the fast bowlers a bit of encouragement, a bit of help. This end that most of the fast bowling has been coming into has a bit of grass just outside the five foot mark on a length where the fast bowlers usually pitch. But of course we saw nothing really happening for them yesterday. What happened yesterday was that Hooper, the spin bowler in the West in this team, got most of the wickets. As we travel down this pitch, you will see that the grass is coming through also in the middle, but not at the far end, the end at which Hooper was bowling into. There are about two meters clear here from the five foot mark where there's hardly any grass and there are few scratch marks. Hooper exploited those quite well yesterday and one would suspect that the spinners and not the fast bowlers might be the influential bowlers on this pitch. Thank you, Michael. So the prospect of a lot of runs to look forward to as we pick up play in the fifth over. Mark Rambrakash is bowling to Ian Bishop and two runs have been added to the overnight score. It's got through Russell. And he's run away for four byes. Tucknell's got rid of night watchman Bishop. And the West Indies lose their second wicket with a score on 91. They're still 312 behind England. 
And a very good delivery. Pitching just about on that off stump line. And a bit of turn. Spin bowlers certainly are getting a bit of turn here. Jack Russell taking the catch. Well, here he is, the uh, West Indies captain, Brian Lara. Comes in to join uh, Clayton Lambert. No stroke play. I think the replay will show that Brian Lara was hit just outside off stump. Pretty difficult for a right-handed bowler to bring the ball back in from outside off stump. Coming over the wicket to a left-hander. Uh, a dodgy field really to bowl to Brian Lara with so little cover on the leg side. Oh. Raises the hundred. End of the over from Duffel. Just wide, he's gone for four, but it was aerial. And uh, it was struck well, but a really great attempt by Hussein. Hussein flying through the air. It's a well set field, just out of his reach. Extraordinary bit of cricket. Lara can down the pitch, hit uh, a firm on drive that deflected off the boot, I think. Yeah, the boot of Clayton Lambert. It ricochets away to the mid off fielder who has a run out chance. Reminder every time he looks at his bat of what he's capable of. Yeah, yeah. He's got that away, but even then. The timing wasn't there. It'll go all the way. But that's the kind of shot that you would expect from Brian Lara to give the fielders absolutely no chance of catching it. Well, there's a leg slip in. And Lara flicks it away in spite of that for four. That favourite late cut of Brian Lara's, no third man, and it's four. Oh, well, that's a big shout, and uh, it's a worthwhile shout as well. I think uh, Cyril Mitchell is indicating there may have been an inside edge on that. Well, I don't think there's any doubt that there's some bat on it. The only thing in question was it pad first, or was it bat first? movement in well it's one that the batsman will always get the benefit of in actual fact it's actually hit the pad first it's uh, hammered away with a straight back over wide mid on for four more it's one two six for two Anguish at missing out. Well, that was pretty close, I think, to the stumps and the outside edge of the bat. Not happy with himself. Wasn't the best shot he's played this morning. Gone! Dean Headley's done the trick. Mark Butcher is the catcher, Brian Lara has finished his first innings here at the Kensington Oval. England are delighted. Well, we saw Brian Lara playing a similar shot in Guyana, being out to the spinner, Robert Croft, in the covers, lofting. Not quite over the ball when he's driving here, Brian Lara, just leaning back a touch too much instead of leaning into the shot. And, of course, the ball is lofted and well caught in the covers. West Indies 134 for three. Shivnarayan Chandapal, the new batsman for the West Indies. He's uh, promoted as he was in Guyana. Yeah. 
He's got it through. And uh, the outfield is pretty fast. That side of the ground is a little bit shorter than the rest, and that's a four. Just the, the placement ready at that boundary. So that's 150 on the board for the West Indies. Not uh, quite the same chair as we had when England raised their 150. to the West Indies team after an absence of six and a half years gets a half century so number 50 long chase up ahead you'll catch it he's very fast and it's the longest part of the ground that will come back for three Seven runs off the over 154 for three. Good save. John Paul just getting a thick outside edge, looking to nudge it down fine. Bit of a loosener. Hasn't bowled since yesterday. I heard his commentate. Nicely bowled by Caddick and given not out by Mitchley. Superb delivery from uh, Caddick. Cyril Mitchley, a very firm not out. Doesn't look as though it took the edge from that replay. I just wonder if the bat hit boot there. There's certainly a little noise, and it's a very sort of thuddy, muffled noise. It's not to the sharp click of ball and bat. No, he does. Just, just clips his boot. Oh, he edged it this time. Well done, Jack Russell. Low to his left side. It's been a very good spell from Caddick since he's come on this afternoon. Clayton Lambert has played and missed in that area on a number of occasions. This time he edges, and he's out. Well, Lambert's bewildering innings comes to an end. It's been really stodgy stuff from him today. Not fluent in his stroke play at all, and uh, Andrew Caddick's thoroughly deserved that wicket. It's been a good spell from him, and eventually uh, Lambert goes for 55. The West Indies now 164 for four. Roland Holder is the surprise new batsman for the West Indies. He's come in ahead of Carl Hooper. Holder's on strike to Caddick. Oh, what a good start, too, from Caddick getting the ball to nip back from uh, around about off stump. Might just have a bit of spice in the game now. It's good bowling again from Caddick. Rampakash again to Chanderpool. Oh, oh, nearly, so nearly. Did it carry? This was a close call for Shivna Ryan Chanderpool. Quite a bit of bounce and turn there, the ball just falling short of Mark Bush at that city point position, just dying on him. I'm sure he thought it would have carried a bit further. Got Holder off the mark. That's a direct result of uh, Caddick having to bowl wider. Holder's waited and dispatched him for four. He's got that through. Waited for it quite uh, beautifully, Shivner and Chandapur. He's picked up his first boundary in very nearly two hours. Rampakash 
coming round the wicket. Oh, and so close. Now, that's an indication of what Ramprakash can do if he comes round the wicket. Back over the wicket now, Ramprakash. Dropped it. Very, very easy catch. A very poor shot. And Butcher puts it down. Well, Ramprakash is having no luck at all. He's uh, bowled beautifully from the pavilion end. Turn and bounce again. Holder trying to play off the back foot. And uh, Butcher really going at it too early. Straight down the ground, open up his shoulders. Just saw the fullness of length that gave him the opportunity to do so. A little bit wide of off stump, and that's a fine stroke by Holder. 185 for four. Now there's uh, the gap. He's got it through this time. Fraser lumbering after it. They'll pick up two and come back for the third. There's a taking a little time to get it back in. So Chandler Paul has finally found the gap. Ramprakash comes around the wicket. Ah! He's bowled him. Holder looking to hit him out of the ground. Missing the shot. Under pressure, Ramprakash gets the deserved wicket. He's seen three chances go down. And Holder, in the end, losing patience, trying to hit it over the top. And Ramprakash breaks the partnership. And Roland Holder... A disappointing innings, out for ten. A very disappointing effort from Roland Holder. He's trying to uh, break loose there. It just uh, doesn't make uh, contact. And uh, Rampakash gets a thoroughly deserved wicket. He's done a great job for his captain. And England are really in the pound seats now. The West Indies, 190 for five. So Carl Hooper finally appears at number seven. And uh, this is going to be a very important uh, partnership. I think uh, Shidnar and Chanderpaul's lucky that Daryl Hare's not standing as umpire. Now, why wouldn't uh, that have hit the stumps? Saw uh, mm. Jimmy Adams given out uh, by Daryl Hare. Real pressure here on the West Indies now. Three days in the sun for the many spectators from England. Some have uh, weathered it better than others. So, clubbed away for four. that well Hooper just uh, dragging the ball down a little bit too often Mark Ramprakash in these first couple of overs after T eight off the over what a beautiful sound that is quite sure that subtle is the word for it but he seems very happy and why not Chanderball has to be careful doing that. Well, that's well worth a shout. And I think you'll see Phil Tuffle will persist in appealing. He has every right to, there's no shot being offered. Russell's put down another chance. Well, I don't think any doubt whatsoever this is a chance. It's bounced, turned, it's a big edge, and Jack Russell has put it down. So 
actually quite a thick edge, you'd have thought. He gloves on it, Jack usually hangs on to them. Well, the new ball's going to be taken. Full toss. Must have just slipped out of the fingers. Yeah, it's a genuine accident. It's a brand new ball. It's slipped out. And Carl Hooper and Andy Kellett just having a little smile about it. Got a bit of a problem down uh, at third man. Well, look, reading what he said there, it's ice or something that's hit him on the head. Well, that's unnecessary, and let's just hope that uh, the person responsible realises how ridiculous that is, or better still, he's ejected and asked never to come back. That's all smiles, so uh, no serious damage done. Well, some things you can't damage. <laughs> got through well there's a lot of celebration from the England side and uh, umpire Nichols has given Chan to Paul out he wasn't going anywhere for a moment but Fraser's done the job and uh, Chan to Paul's long vigil is over and England in with a fighting chance now. The West Indies 214 for six. West Indies wicketkeeper David Williams uh, comes out to the centre at number eight in the order with the night watchman Bishop. Now have a look at this. I think that this is one that I will not understand. I'll never understand it. Even from this distance, you could see that it was a full toss. Now if you edge a full toss, obviously if it's hitting the bat on the full and then it hits the ground, how can that be out? Well, I suppose if he had caught it with one hand in the slips, could have said one hand, one bounce, that's out. Now, Andrew Caddick bowled a beautiful spell with the old ball. But uh, now he's seen the uh, new ball swing here and he's uh, just starting to experiment a little. It's a disappointing finish for David Williams, a patient stay for him, but he's gone for just two. Everything going England's way, the West Indies seven down now for 221. It's so uncanny how so many of these drives seem to be going for a long way in the air on this pitch. Again, David Williams driving through the offside, not quite to the pitch, playing through the line of the ball, but not succeeding in keeping it down. Another failure here for David Williams with the bat. He departs for two. West Indies 221 for seven and slip further into the mire. And England rejoice. Nixon McLean has been sent in above Kirtley Ambrose. Oh. He must be close and is out. Eddie Nichols says yes to Angus Fraser. Carl Hooper has gone ball just nipping back a fraction just a fraction beating the defensive stroke but the key is that Cooper is caught on the crease Curly Ambrose uh, comes out not much uh, later than he would have come if he had preceded uh, Nixon McLean Hooper didn't last uh, very long after the dismissal of Williams. <laughs> so something to cheer about for the West Indian sp spectators in the crowd. It will go all the way. Good back drive by Ambrose.
over the top down towards backward point it's gone away for four that is for sure and there's no problem about middling that <laughs> and again over wide mid on this time Fraser just bowling it in the slot for Ambrose comes and launched it to inside out over extra cover and it's four more 250 up for West Indies and then higher and wider and Russell appeals for the stumping Cyril Mitchley calls for the third umpire Kirtley Ambrose thinks he's in well, judging by the players' reaction, they all seem to think it's out. Now, does Kirtley Ambrose's foot lift? That's out. And remember, is that on the line is out. Now, it might come down afterwards, but I think at the moment of impact, I would say that that is out. Ambrose is gone. Stumped by Russell off Tufnell. It gives Philip Tufnell his 100th Test match wicket. And the West Indies are 255 for nine. Over mid on. That'll race away for four. It. Headley's done the job, and some might say about time too. Walsh not impressed, but uh, that's how you get tail enders out. And the West Indies all out for 262, so they're trailing England by 141 on first innings. What a day for the visiting side. Well, that's the story of the day. Great pressure created by the spinners in particular and some very poor shots. Lambert's 55 took nearly five hours. Chandapal was very unlucky and Ambrose swung merrily at the end. England's bowling was very disciplined. Caddick bowled accurately, but it was the spinners who really tied the batsmen down. And Ramprakash deserved more than just that one wicket. Well, England added two runs in two uneventful overs, and that's a situation they lead by 143 runs, with two full days remaining. Well, we didn't get our feast of runs, far from it, but for my money, that was England's most disciplined day of the whole tour. Now they must build on that, keep the pressure on the West Indies, and who knows, they can put themselves in a position here from which they could level the series. Find out on Test Match Special at 2 o'clock tomorrow to see how they get on. From all of us here in Barbados, a very good night.